I started working on American eel accidentally when I was doing research in the Sydney tar ponds. I had a graduate student who was looking at parasites as a biomonitor. She included eels in her study, so she accidentally came across this invasive parasite in the swim bladder. Uh, known as, it's a complex name called Angolicoloides crassus. Essentially, it's a, a roundworm or a nematode. We have a high percentage of eels infected with the invasive nematode. We suspected that something uh, invasive would hit uh, the Bredore Lakes. We've had the green crab, we've had MSX disease, you know, it was just a, qu a question of what's next. So they are roundworms, and uh, we coincidentally published the first Canadian record in Canadian waters for that particular species. It was very important for us when we did the, the eel project and to conduct our research was to respect the eel. Uh, we tried as much as possible to work with a small amount of eels. Uh, we did get a large a proportion of our samples from our eel fishers and we promised that we would return it, turn the meat to them. The process takes about an hour, a little over an hour, um, where we would um, determine the length of the eel. We would measure the eel to the nearest millimeter, weigh it, look at the eyes and stage it whether it was yellow, kind of silver, or something in between is a, a silvering state. And we'll note if it's a pointed head or rounded head. That seems to help us to determine whether it's male or female. Then we would um, look for external marks that may be an indication of whether or not it had the swim bladder parasite. And most often, we didn't see any types of, of markings. It was often a big surprise when we opened and, and it was like, oh, this eel looked really healthy, it looked really good, and then the swim bladder would be full of the parasites. The nematode can infect eels um, quite drastically. We've seen infections upwards of 30 nematodes per eel, and the maximum was 50 in our study here in Cape Breton. We once had an eel that had 75 parasites in one swim bladder. Swim bladders are much like if I go scuba diving and I wear a buoyancy compensator device or a, an actual vest that I can inflate and deflate to go up and down in the water column. That's essentially what a swim bladder does for an eel. With that many worms inside a swim bladder, um, it's, it's completely inundated or distended by the presence of the worms. The swim bladder parasite does not affect humans at all. It affects the eel, and we're not even sure how it really affects the eel because it seems to be that, you know, um, the eels are feeding. The eels are eating, the eels are swimming. So the biggest concern would be we really don't know how it's going to impact the, the adult eels that make that lengthy migration to the Sargasso Sea for spawning. It could affect uh, the ability of the eels to contribute their offspring to future generations. Mm -hmm.